Hello. Uh, I don't have to be so long-winded today as I was yesterday. I packed a lot into one video yesterday, I felt. Uh, uh, I'll do two videos, and at first I want to clean some things up uh, from before. Uh, so my 97th day of doing this, the first video. Uh, it occurred to me this morning, uh, this morning, I was chatting with my German friend, whom on, who I call Shirley here, uh, about... Uh, how she's doing in understanding and, and also about how her husband uh, has been watching these, a German speaker, but his English is good. And I said, well, I wonder what he'll think when I turn to Spanish, because next week I'm going to start to teach Spanish for two, two weeks or so. She said, well, he doesn't know any Spanish he didn't know. Any, so it, in any case, that led me to think, you know, I've never done this before, but maybe later in the year, uh, in a month or two, maybe I should teach English for a couple weeks in this course and teach it in German, which is actually a funny thought because my German is not that good. But I'm thinking about doing it. Uh, it might be worthwhile. I've got some viewers who are German speakers and they might at least be amused to hear me do that. So that was one thought. Another thought is, uh, if you watched um, what I asked you to of the, uh, or some of Beowulf, that semi-animated uh, movie, uh, Grendel, when he goes back to the cave, uh, he's, his arm has been ripped off, uh, he's speaking to his mother, Grendel is speaking uh, Old English in that movie. Uh, I heard it, actually, I don't know Old English, but I listened and I thought, whoa, that's not just gibberish, that's a language. And then I researched it, IMDB, International Movie Database, IMDB is a very useful uh, website, uh, and uh, it might have been there, uh, International Movie Database. Um, I think that might have been where I found it, but anyway, he, uh, Grendel is actually speaking Old English. You can hear what Old English sounds like if you want. Um, I mentioned uh, that uh, Beowulf, as an old king, he goes back into battle. I'm not sure if I mentioned uh, that as an archetype, uh, a kind of character. Back in uh, the section of the notes, the fourth section of your notes, page something, I actually, I'm not sure I did put that in there. But it should go in there, uh, because that occurs often enough. And Tolkien, J.R.R. R. Tolkien, used that uh, epic or that archetype uh, with the writers of Rohan. I don't remember the king, but he was old and he was decrepit. But he went back into battle. Uh, Tolkien very much drew from his knowledge. <laughs> There's a cat. Uh, from his knowledge of the epic uh, themes and archetypes. Uh, that rebellious son, the idea of the rebellious son uh, that, that uh, they brought into the Beowulf movie, uh, son against father, I just wondered then, did I call that an archetype, which is what, what I think of it, or is that an epic theme? These two are not all that different. Epic themes in your notes are section, the fifth section, uh, so it would be page five point something. It doesn't really matter. And then finally, cleaning things up, uh, Valhalla, I should have put that in there. Uh, you should have that in your notes, because it's well enough known, with Valhalla, which is like Viking heaven in a way. Uh, and I think the, the, the Vikings, as I understand it, imagined it as a great mead hall in the sky. All right, that had to do with what we did before. The next video, uh, I'll tell you what I'd like you to do uh, today. So, uh, I'll be right back.